Hello and welcome to ETI 4640. This session will continue addressing the implementation of the different strategies to accomplish the main uh, goal for the company. The product life cycle will be explained to understand the requirements and the process required to develop a strategy. Examples will be provided to demonstrate strategy implementation. Developing strategies will depend on understanding product life cycle and the different uh, phases uh, in that cycle. The product life cycle has four stages or four phases. The first phase is the introduction, uh, which include uh, the research and development of the product, addressing design, feasibility, and building product according to customer needs. The second phase is the growth, uh, where the company will uh, be concentrating on pricing uh, to compete in the market and strengthening the product niche. The third phase is the maturity phase, uh, less changes, uh, more stability, competitive cost, and uh, product sustainability. The last phase is the decline stage where the product demand starts uh, to decline, uh, either uh, because of new technology or other products replacing uh, the current product. At this phase, the company has to think of a replacement uh, of the declining product with a new product which will uh, be released overlapping the decline phase. So basically the introduction for the new one will be uh, during the decline of the previous one. In the first phase, since design is the main cons uh, concern, many iterations and design changes will be introduced. Either a prototype will be created or short runs to produce small quantity for testing, uh, which will lead to high cost and, of course, limited models. In the second phase, there is a need to uh, concentrate on product and process reliability and increasing capacity to fulfill demand, in addition to enhancing distribution channels. In the third phase, uh, there should not be any major changes and the concentration will be on the stability of the product, the capacity and process. In the last stage, uh, or actually in, in the third stage, the maturity stage, uh, we can make long uh, runs, run production runs, uh, that will reduce the cost. In the last stage, the company should start reducing the capacity phasing out the product and minimizing the cost associated with the declining product. With the global competition, um, it's very important to identify the strengths and the weaknesses of the company. In addition, we need to identify a new opportunity and or new opportunities and external threats. With the mission statement and knowing the um, uh, goals and the SWOT analysis that we just did, the company can develop a strategy to compete in a global market. So the development process for the strategy, uh, we start with analyzing the environment through the SWOT analysis, determine the company mission, then uh, form uh, the proper strategy that will build a competitive advantage. Developing, developing the strategy will be through identifying key success factors, integrating operations management with other activities and staff the organization with skilled employees. Implementing operations management will increase productivity and uh, provide the uh, company with the required uh, competitive advantage. This slide shows some of the success factors um, in the uh, different functional areas and decision making areas. As an example of low-cost strategy, Southwest Airline provided services and created their processes in a way to increase their competitive advantage. Southwest Airlines customer service is con uh, courteous, uh, but limited, no seat assignment, bags uh, fly free, no meals, uh, automated ticketing, and no baggage transfer. So they're trying, to, they try to limit some of the services but at the same time still courteous and they work with you on the um, uh, seating and the services that they provide in the airplane. Uh, they selected a point-to-point -point routes using uh, secondary airports instead of major airports which will reduce the gate cost, uh, increase the number of flights and reduce uh, employee idle time between flights. With the point-to-point -point routes, uh, Southwest 
managed to offer frequent reliable flights with reliable schedules. Many flights to the same city will reduce the administrative cost per passenger for that city. And again, this will reduce uh, the employee idle time. Having a standard fleet of Boeing 737 aircraft reduced uh, pilot required training to one type of aircraft and also reduced the maintenance inventory and created an excellent relationship with the supplier. High aircraft utilization reduced the gate turnarounds to 20 minutes and created a flexible schedule. In addition, decreased the time required to maintain an aircraft. Southwest implemented lean in their services and empowered uh, employees. Uh, they hired employees for uh, their attitude, then trained them for the required job. In addition, they offered high employee compensations. This slide and the next uh, slide show a, a comparison between two companies and the strategy approach based on the uh, product competitive advantage operations strategies have been implemented in all decision areas. So you can look at the different decision areas for these two drug companies, one that provides a brand name and the other one that provides a generic uh, drug for uh, the customers. Um, the generic drug with low cost strategy and the brand name with uh, like production differentiation strategy. Uh, with the different areas, you can look at the different areas where, where they have the product selection and design, the quality, the process, the location, and then the layout, the human resources, the skills uh, that uh, will be needed to accomplish that task, the supply chain, the list of suppliers and supplier selection, inventory, scheduling, and maintenance. So in each area, they have certain decisions and you can see the differences between uh, uh, you know, uh, low cost strategy and product differentiation strategy uh, in those different areas based on the main strategy that's been selected by the company. An important decision to make is to either uh, to perform uh, some company's activities in house uh, or to outsource. Uh, to another company, outsource to another company. So this is an, another concept that we introduce, which means transferring activities that have been traditionally internal to external suppliers. Sometimes because you don't have the proper skills, uh, you don't have the uh, experience, uh, you don't have the budget to do that, but you can um, actually outsource it for a company who's professional, uh, who has the skills, uh, know what they're doing and they have all the material and all what the, you need to do is just to outsource it to them and they can do the job for you. Outsourcing have been increasingly um, or increasing recently due to uh, the increased technological expertise. So you, you will have lots of uh, companies that specialize in cloud computing and IT and support so on. And that's why uh, there are lots of people uh, or lots of small businesses who will outsource the IT, for example, bus business to them. More reliable and cheaper transportation. Uh, it's now easier to um, uh, move stuff from one place to another, whether we are talking about information or material. It's very easy to move stuff. And that's why with cheaper transportation, uh, outsourcing became um, uh, more feasible. Rapid development and deployment of advancements in uh, the telecommunication and computers. You can uh, meet uh, with a group from China or meet with a group from uh, Europe or any other country uh, just using uh, the uh, internet and through computers. You can see the screen, you can see, uh, share the screen if you want, share a design, uh, the drawings and uh, even you know, participate face-to-face uh, -face through online channels. So all that's been developed and because of that, you know, outsourcing became easier. A contract will be developed between the company and the outsource uh, contractor to ensure understanding of responsibilities and limitations. So it will include what will be required from the contractor or the uh, outsourcing company and uh, the uh, original company. And that's why we have to write a contract being signed and know exactly what is the responsibilities and what kind of limitations or boundaries has to be there. 
some of the outsourced companies or activities um, are uh, legal services so sometimes for law firm you can uh, outsource that you can uh, also outsource IT services uh, maybe travel services payroll uh, production uh, and sometimes uh, surgery so it depends on uh, what kind of uh, again area or activity you need but in most cases you can um, uh, outsource if you don't have the proper skills in house actually it uh, it is a theory that if an external provider can perform activities more productively than the purchasing firm then the external provider uh, should do that work and uh, the purchasing firm focuses on core competencies the main risk of outsourcing is losing control on quality delivery and performance you are not in control anymore and you have to accept that uh, so when you outsource you have to make sure that you are outsourcing to the right company if the outsourcing was not was to more than 50 percent of the activities then the activity is uh, or the company is creating a potential uh, uh, for future competition uh, now remember that they they have they know most of the work that you do so if they know everything about what you can do or what you're doing then they can start their own business and why do they need you anymore uh, if they are doing the job themselves Out outsourcing can leave a negative impact on employees and feeling of instability if you can outsource um, um, the IT department and you have uh, uh, IT uh, staff then the IT staff will feel that they are uh, unstable and they can be fired at any time so that will impact their morale and um, their loyalty for the company so again you have to be careful when you outsource and the uh, reasons for outsourcing to outsource companies must analyze and evaluate their contractors uh, a factor rating method can be used to evaluate and assess these uh, contractors points and weights uh, are assigned to each factor this slide shows an example of factor rating process and uh, calculations with uh, three companies to outsource to. Uh, we have the uh, PIM, uh, SPC, and Tilco. So those are the three companies, and with the calculation of the weight, we can multiply the weight with the uh, rating of that uh, activity in that country, and based on that, if we uh, can add you can see that BIM will be selected because they scored the highest in the overall selection criteria after learning about the importance of considering the global environment uh, which uh, which global operation strategy should the company use there are more than one strategy uh, that uh, are available for companies and choosing a strategy will be based on the type of product or service uh, you provide for the society the company provides for the society so if you have to import export or license existing products then uh, you have to follow what will be called a, an international strategy this strategy does not have much advantage for the cost and the response for the local market um, for that uh, actually it will reside uh, in the lower left corner of the strategy graph with low response and um, no, no advantage of cost reduction. If the company is looking to uh, standardize their product and use mass ordering, then a global strategy should be used. This strategy is appropriate for um, reducing the cost so there is a focus on cost reduction but has a low uh, local response so the response will be not as quick or as it should for that it will reside on the upper left corner of the strategy graph if the company is using existing domestic model globally 
uh, through joint ventures or franchise, uh, then the best strategy to use will be the uh, multi-domestic strategy. Uh, it provides a fast response to the local market but has little or no cost advantage. So for that, it will reside in the lower right corner of the strategy graph. If the company needs to move material, people or ideas across national boundaries, uh, use mass ordering capabilities and benefit from cross-cultural learning, uh, then the best strategy will be the uh, transnational strategy. Uh, these firms have the optional or the potential to pursue uh, all three strategies if they want. Uh, since they have the capabilities of being flexible, then they can use all three strategies um, together. And for that, this strategy will reside in the upper right corner of the strategy graph with uh, the highest cost reduction and highest or fastest response to the market. As uh, a last reminder, uh, when working globally, when outsourcing, when you are dealing with other countries, when you are dealing with other companies, you have to consider uh, many, many factors, including the political stability, the ethics, corruption, and other related factors. And this table here shows the ranking of corruption uh, in different countries. And uh, you can uh, see the percentage of corruption based on um, scores, CPI score that's been collected in 2017. That will be all for this session. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact me via email or any of provided channels. Thank you and have a great day.